Ms. Loving, how can I help you? Are you not able to get through? Hello? Good morning. Morning. Vice Mayor? Yes. Good morning. Oh, right. Good morning, Victoria there. Ernesto here. Yes, I'm here. Hi, how are you? Good. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, we're I think we're ready to go, Rafael. Yes, sir. Yes. Very well. Good. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and start our meeting. We'll call our meeting to order. Uh, Vice Mayor Fleming and myself will be joining you this morning. Uh, Councilmember Sawyer was unable to to meet with us this morning, so we'll go ahead and call to order. Just as a reminder, uh, because of our current uh, uh, COVID conditions, the COVID world we're living in, we are suspending certain requirements of the Brown Act. That's why we're having this uh, meeting by uh, Zoom. Uh, again, just following the public uh, health uh, officer's orders. Uh, so uh, we will do this as we have in our past meetings. Uh, and again, when it comes time to public comment, uh, we, we will uh, you will use your raise hand feature on your Zoom, uh, or if you are calling uh, by phone, I believe you'll be able to press uh, star nine uh, to be able to be acknowledged. And we will use the same process that we have in the past. Uh, so with that, uh, do we have any announcements for this morning? 
Hearing none, we'll, we'll move on to our public comments. Uh, so again, if you wish to make a comment uh, via Zoom, please select the raise hand button. And if you're dialing in via telephone, please use the star nine to raise your hand. Uh, and then we will acknowledge you. Uh, do we have any public comment this morning? I don't want to raise at this time. Okay, let's go ahead and move on with uh, with our uh, agenda. We have a number of items this morning, so we'll try to get through them all so we can get you all back to your television sets and see what's happening out there in the nation. Uh, we'll begin with item uh, 4.1. Uh, no, we've, we've, uh, we've done that, right? Um, item 4.2, we have permitted events in public art. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Thank you. Um, good morning, Chair Olivares, Vice Mayor Fleming, and everyone. Uh, I have just a very brief update. Um, not really any new information regarding special events since our last meeting. Special event permits remain suspended through 2020, at least through the end of the year, at least. Uh, it's looking like that will go on into 2021 at this point. Um, I did want to bring up one, one point of information that I get asked a lot from members of the public and other staff members. So I thought I would share here about free speech activities. Um, so free speech activities such as marches and assemblies may not require permits under normal circumstances if COVID wasn't uh, a restriction at this time, as long as they don't include event elements such as vendors and stages or jumpy houses, um, equipment such as that. So there are state guidelines for participating in protests safely during COVID that include wearing masks and keeping six feet apart from others. So I thought I would just share that information since it comes up a lot uh, from the public. Um, you, as, no, go on, sorry, go ahead. Okay, in terms of um, an arts update, um, I did want to share that the Imagine Art in Old Courthouse Square project is moving along, although it has been delayed a few times by current events. Um, so the last time I gave an update, I shared that there had been five finalists and we were doing outreach to get community input on those five finalists um, and the selection panel would be making their decision soon. Well, the selection panel has now narrowed down those finalists to two artists and they are now working with those artists directly to ask additional information to clarify design components from each artist before making a final decision. So now our current timeline is looking like there will be an announcement of the selected artists in early December. So I will hopefully be able to share an update again next month. The open and out um, public art uh, components of open and out are mostly wrapped up with a few installations still in the works and Cadence can provide um, more information when she gives her downtown action organization update. And then I wanted to share very briefly that um, one of the initiatives we took on in economic development in the beginning of COVID was building a new website through our out there campaign called insightoutthere.com. And it really has grown over the last few months and continues to be a place for people to connect with local Santa Rosa artists, musicians, retailers, restaurants, breweries, wineries. Um, I encourage you all to check it out if you haven't already. And, uh, and that is my update for today. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Vice Mayor Flame, do you have any questions? No, I just wanted to say um, a special thank you on the updates around the requirements for um, protests. Sure, you're welcome. Thank you. And do we have any uh, comments uh, from uh, members of the public? I see no raised hands at this time. Thank you. Let's move on to uh, downtown action organization. A lot of great things happening downtown. Uh, Cadence, can you report out, please? Yeah, thank you, Chair Alvarez. Good morning, Vice Mayor Fleming. I'm having a little Zoom trouble, so hopefully this goes smoothly for the next few minutes here. Uh, I want to just start by saying thank you. As uh, Chair Oliveira said, we have a lot of projects happening downtown, and um, it's required a lot of support from city staff. And uh, all of the partnerships that we've developed and are, are working through have just been really supportive, a lot of creative problem solving, 
from city staff um, moving quickly to get things done. And I just wanted to share on behalf of everyone downtown how much we appreciate that. Uh, really, every department we're working with understands the importance of supporting small businesses right now and how uh, crucial their continued success is to downtown and the city overall. So thank you to everybody. Um, quick update on open and out. So the program officially wrapped up on October 15th. We did get great feedback from members of the community. Um, kind of looking forward now to figuring out how we can keep that momentum going, um, not just in the immediate future, but uh, throughout the year and the coming years as well. As Tara said, uh, we are almost done with installing our art. It's, it's been kind of nice that it's been spread out as much as it has. We've got, I think, three pieces remaining to be installed. So we'll see uh, two more of those going in uh, by the end of this year, and then uh, one going in next April. So um, kind of excited to see those rolling out and, and brightening up things downtown. The 600 block has reopened um, and the 700 block is actually going to be reopened next week. So all of the restaurants on those two blocks had to reduce their parklets, um, get permits to operate in the street, but we've been able to come up with solutions for most of them. So again, um, thanks to the city staff for supporting that effort. It's very tough for our restaurants to operate right now, kind of with, without being able to operate indoors at all. Um, heading toward rainy season, there's a lot of anxiety, understandably there. Um, uh, really nervous to kind of see how things pan out and, and what happens in Sonoma County so that if they can potentially start operating differently. Um, but they're all trying to, you know, fortify their parklets, uh, bring in heat, uh, create rain cover. So um, doing everything we can to help them keep business going as much as possible. Um, with open and out wrapping up, we're transitioning into the Chamber's Winter Lights Celebration. So I think everyone is has, has probably familiar with it, with the event as it used to be. Uh, this year, obviously, we are looking at things completely differently. Everything is um, being created kind of uh, in the same vein as open and out, but really with social distancing in front of mind. So we're not trying to bring people down at one time for a big tree lighting. We'll be uh, doing a little bit of a virtual component and then focusing on creating a fun celebratory family focused atmosphere downtown from November 27th to January 1st. Uh, so we'll, we're creating a little winter wonderland in Jeju Way. We've got some fun family um, kind of scavenger hunt type activities downtown. So the little ones can come and uh, kind of look for different things that have been put out for them. Uh, we've got a couple different photo opportunities that people can come and take pictures in front of, new art going in. Uh, we'll have music during the day, during kind of prime shopping hours on the weekends. Um, and then we're working with uh, Tara and her team to bring elements of the handmade uh, holiday craft fair that's usually at Finley to Courthouse Square. So um, excited about all of those. Uh, I think that it's going to create a very fun festive atmosphere and then we're also um, working on some additional decorations. So we have uh, all of our downtown businesses, we have purchased evergreen swags so they can decorate their doors. We, The Engine is Red designed some really, really great um, new street banners that um, kind of feature downtown Santa Rosa in a holiday theme. So we're really excited to roll those out. Um, and then we're also working on getting some new lighting installed on 4th Street. So uh, I think all of that is moving forward and looking like it, it should be done by the time that Winter Lights officially kicks off. So excited to be um, having these elements in place to create that, that festive shopping, dining, um, community atmosphere downtown that we can continue from opening up. I'll give a... a Quick update on our Street Plus team um, as well. So we, we are fully staffed, which is great. Um, it's been a, a struggle for them recently with all the homeless activity downtown. Um, we're really grateful for working with Catholic Charities and Host. We, we meet with um, Kelly and her team and Catholic Charities every week to talk through issues. Um, so that, that partnership has been growing and, and um, it's really helpful to have their support. 
but the impact to businesses downtown is very hard to combat. Um, our Street Plus team has shifted their schedule to try and, and kind of better uh, deal with some of the constant issues that come up, but uh, it remains an ongoing problem. Um, it, you know, it, unpleasant interactions for customers, vandalism, overnight activity, uh, it's really making it hard for uh, our small businesses to operate. Uh, many of them feel like it's been getting worse over the past couple months. Um, and I think our, our landlords as well, who are looking to rent empty spaces, whether it's uh, in, you know, it's an office space or restaurant retail, it's it's been hard um, when the the impacts of that have been so uh, prevalent. So definitely concerning uh, and an ongoing issue that we are trying to deal with. But uh, again, appreciate the city's support around that and look forward to kind of future discussions around really trying to uh, change that perception downtown, the perception and reality. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is the Isawa Fountain. So I think it's kind of the, uh, <laughs> the, the way things go right now, but you know, we, experience, we also experienced some delays in getting um, the project moving as quickly as we thought. Uh, no issues have come up, just, uh, just you know, a couple COVID related delays. We did finalize all the funding. So, you know, huge thank you to um, our donors for that, uh, Donna Bourne and Exchange Bank and the Rotary Clubs kind of stepped in to close that gap. So that's fantastic. Uh, and we are still hoping to break ground by the end of the year, but I'll look forward to sharing um, an update, hopefully a little bit more of a concrete timeline with all of you at our uh, next meeting as well. I think that's it for me, unless there's any questions. Thank you, Cadence, and th thank you for your leadership uh, downtown, the coordination that you're doing with everybody. I know it's difficult. There's so many moving parts to make this happen. Uh, it's not easy, uh, but you've you've stuck to it, and I think uh, the results have been, from my perspective, amazing for downtown and our entire city. So thank you for all you're doing, and thanks uh, for all the things that you're planning. Uh, a lot of great creativity going into this as we move into the uh, winter months and the holidays. So thank you for that, uh, Vice Mayor Fleming. Do you have any questions or comments? I do not. Thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you. Appreciate thanks. that. Any members? Thank you. Any members of the public wishing have uh, wishing to comment on this item? Thank you, Chair Oliveira. Star, no raised hands at this time. Give a little more brief second, just in case there's a little delay there. And still nothing. Uh, still nothing. Okay. Thank you. Then we'll go ahead uh, and we'll move into uh, our parking program with Kim. Good morning. Um, happy to be speaking with you today. I'll try to keep this fairly brief. I know there's a lot on the agenda. So the first thing I wanted to let you know is that we are moving forward with the replacement of the park, the parking equipment in the garages. This has been a long time coming project. The um, contract, of course, was awarded and we've got the plan submitted to the building department. So as soon as we get the permit approved, we will be moving forward with installation. So we expect that to be soon. Um, uh, the, the permit has been submitted for probably about a month now, and I know they've got quite a backlog. So we're hoping that we'll be beginning our, our installation in, um, in this month. We also have a pretty significant garage repair project that is, um, has been awarded, and they're going to be starting work this month as well. That will be in all in four of the garages. The only garage that doesn't have repair work uh, at this time is the Third Street garage. So um, you can expect to see some impacts. The, the garages will all still be functioning and people will still be able to park. Um, but that's really necessary work to keep water from getting inside the structures, which will extend the useful life of them. We're also working on extending the fee reductions, the parking fee reductions that we that the approved at the end of June that went into effect for July 1st and they're set to expire at the end of the year. So we um, will be going to council on December 10th to extend uh, some of these fee reductions, including the reduction of the value zone hourly rate to 50 cents an hour, 
continuing to have free parking in the garages Monday through Friday after five o'clock, free parking in the garages on Sunday, and waiving the fees for the temporary parklets that we've been doing. As, um, and then we'll also be continuing the promotion with the Passport app that provides for one free uh, session up to $3.15. And the code that you would enter is PARKSR if you want to take advantage of that. So we encourage people to use the app. Um, we've seen quite a bit of impacts from COVID. Our, uh, our revenue is down so far for the first through, through October for uh, this fiscal year. It's down 50% year over year, which we expected that it would be down. Um, it's slowly recovering. For example, in July, the revenue was down 60% year over year. So we're, the, we're seeing a creeping trend of improvement, but it's, it's slow. Um, our transactions were down, also down 60% in July. They're down 50% in October, so same trend. Uh, we've seen a 30% reduction in permits. And on the enforcement side, we, we are writing far fewer tickets and we're writing uh, uh, upwards of 50% warnings when, when citation, I mean, they're not citations, they're just warnings. So we're giving everybody a one-time warning before they would get a citation um, we have set up 19 curbside pickup spaces, the 15 minute zones. We had 79 spaces blocked off due to the street closures. Of course, that will be reduced as the streets reopen. And we've got 26 spaces that were blocked due to the temporary parklets. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to remind people that we have a, a low wage discounted employee permit that uh, that the for employees that make twenty two dollars and ninety six dollars and ninety six cents an hour or less qualify for a fifty percent discount on permits at the first street garage and the seventh street garage, and then we also have a very discounted. Uh, permit for employees who work at night. It's $10 a month. It's good at any garage and it's good from 3 p.m. to 6 a.m. So I just wanted to remind people that we're really doing our best to encourage employees to not park on the street and give them really affordable options to do so. And that's all I've got. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Kim. Uh, Vice Mayor, do you have any questions? I do not. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to our host, see if there's any raised hands for public comment on this item? Uh, yes, there is one raised hand. We have Bernard Schwartz. Bernard, I'm going to allow you to speak if um, we all could hold for just one moment. I'm just going to um, pull up public comment screen. Hold on. And Mr. Schwartz, are you able to see the um, the timer? I can. Wonderful. I'll go ahead and start. Okay, Kim, I just had one question, which is that you said when you were going for the extension of the fee reductions, it would include free parking in the garage on Sunday. Currently, it's on Saturday and Sunday. Is that going to remain the same? Uh, no, we're proposing that we would resume paid parking on Saturday, but continue with uh, the free parking on Sundays. So I'm hoping that there's some opportunity from input um, from the downtown community because we're still very much impacted um, and we don't expect that the first quarter is going to be any better than it is now. Um, have you done any outreach with the action committee or any of the downtown businesses? on that proposal? We've been in, in touch with, uh, through Cadence, but not, I have not participated in any of the um, merchant meetings recently. So no, that, that has not happened. Of course, the, the goal here was to provide some balance. We wanna to continue to support the downtown. We're looking at a projected $1.5 million hit to the parking fund this year. Um, so we're trying to find a way to continue to support the downtown in a meaningful way, but also try to recover some of the revenue that is, is being um, lost to the parking fund, understanding that we've got uh, 
millions of dollars of capital improvement projects that need to be completed and we're trying to find a way to keep a sustainable program. Understood and we certainly want the parking district to remain strong. At the same time, I know the city would like to maximize whatever sales taxes can come in. So I hope there's room for some further conversation on this and, um, and thank you, I'm done now. Thank you, Chair Alvarez. We have an additional person with the raised hand, uh, Julie Montgomery. Julie, I've unmuted you and we will be sharing the screen so you can see your time for public comments. Are, are you able to see that screen? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I would just like to echo Bernie's comments. I'm Julie with Kindred Fair Trade and on the square. And I really hope that the, the decision or the idea to charge for parking on Saturdays in the garages could be looked at because as Bernie said, you know, I understand that the parking program needs to remain strong. But downtown is struggling, especially as retailers as it is, and we really need to put a lot of effort into making sure that we can make it through this holiday season. And having parking in the garages for free on the weekends is going to be key to that. Thank you very much. There are no other hands at this time. Okay, so you know, what I wanted to do is there are no other raised hands. I wanted to move back. I made an error in our agenda with item 4.1. I misread that. And as you recall, back in September, we did have some glitches with uh, having people be able to comment, et cetera. So I want to go back to that and see if there are any public comments on items that we have presented back on September the 3rd. Uh, at, our, at our meeting, as you again, some of you recall, we did have a little of a glitch. So I wanted to take this opportunity to see if there's anybody that had public comment on, on our discussions from back then. I know it was a while ago, but I just wanted to afford that opportunity. Chair Oliveros, there are no hands raised yes. at this time. Thank you very much. So with that, we'll move on to item 4.5. Uh, we have uh, a Railroad Square Association Community Benefit District, Rafael. Yes, uh, good morning, Chair Olivares and Vice Mayor Fleming. It's a pleasure to uh, hear you and see you. Well, hear you, Vice Mayor. <laughs> um, and uh, the next item, of course, is the uh, update on Railroad Square Association. And uh, Eileen, I don't know if we have unmuted uh, Christina. Uh, oh, okay. Um, and then uh, moving forward, um, the association has hired a part-time uh, director, so we're very excited about that, and her name is Christina Wilson, and she um, has a very impressive uh, resume. Uh, she spent some time working at St. Joseph's uh, Health for quite a long time uh, for the foundation as well as for the, uh, the development uh, de uh, department, and she's also some, done some other consulting uh, work, and uh, we're very delighted that we'll be able to uh, continue uh, working closely with Rebel Square Association as well as with this um, our, our, the new director. So, Christina, uh, if you'd like to provide us with an update on developments in Rebel Square. Sure, thank you. And please call me Chris. Um, uh, first, I want to acknowledge uh, Cadence and thank you, Cadence, for the time. Uh, we'll be meeting regularly. Um, Cadence has set up such a very good system and program in downtown and I'm looking forward to doing a lot of collaborating with the Railroad Square District so that uh, you know we can have a little more blending of the two districts so looking forward to that and um, also with Tara meeting with Tara and you know sending me guidelines and things that I can share with the business owners down there as I'm getting my arms around just the position, I've uh, been spending time really getting acquainted with the business owners and property owners and listening and hearing what their issues are and things that we'd like to be doing. We, uh, we had a, a great day and thanks Raphael for all your help and time. We, we uh, welcomed our new AC hotel uh, that recently opened in Railroad Square District and also Nimble and Finn's ice cream shop that just opened. Uh, so if you haven't wandered down there, you really should. 
and uh, we did a couple of uh, volunteer street cleanings a couple of Monday mornings. Again, thank you, Raphael, for bringing brooms and bags and picker uppers. Uh, so, uh, you know, we did street cleaning, but it's also a great way of engaging our, our board and our business owners down there to let them know, keep us more visible as an association that um, we're there to support them. So, um, we are working on just about have completed. We'll be doing a historic walking tour with the Klingons. It'll be going on a number of the those beautiful historic buildings down there, so that people can can walk around on their own and use their phone and and be able to uh, learn more about some of the history in in the railroad square. Uh, we've started the process for banner replacement in railroad square, and. Um, looking at holiday marketing, holiday lighting, really wanting to light up Railroad Square more. Uh, being limited this year, of course, we can't do all the creative things that I would love to be doing down there, but we are working on what we can do to create a festive atmosphere. And hopefully then it would even be a link with, with the, the winter lights that Caden's working on downtown to extend the lights and warm and welcome feeling of Railroad Square. Um, there is some talk, we're in very pre preliminary planning stages of a possible farmer's market in the spring. So we're looking now at, you know, what the process is for certification and the feasibility of doing that. So a lot of projects going on and um, I'm learning as I'm going. Again, thank you, Raphael, for your support and everyone. So looking forward to seeing you and working with you. So if anyone has any questions, let me have it. Chris, this is Ernesto. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the team and to the, the committee as well. We look forward to a future report from you and engagement. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor, do you have any questions or comments? No, we're excited to have the Community Benefit District staff and uh, up and running. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Madam Host. There are no raise hands okay. at this time. Okay. One quick last call for any, any comments on this item. Okay, we have none. So, uh, Ravel, if you have anything more on that piece of it, we'll go ahead and move on to our banner policy update. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, thank you again, and good morning, everyone. It's uh, great to uh, hear some of you, and uh, I recognize some names. So uh, thank you, Chris, and everybody else who's chipping in, basically, with uh, these very difficult times, um, especially not just here in Santa Rosa, but uh, throughout, our, throughout our nation and even our, our world. Um, but I'm here uh, this morning to go very quickly uh, for a second time this year to uh, discuss the, the banner policy and uh, provide an update uh, regarding that. Um, I'm also in this uh, very brief presentation going to talk about um, uh, some of the background related to the banner policy, um, uh, the purpose and why it's needed. And then I'll uh, walk you through uh, very quickly through the, through the process, through the application process and how we got there. Um, I got a very uh, brief presentation, so we're gonna go right through it, um, and then I'll answer any questions. Uh, and Tara, feel, feel free to chime in, and, and I don't know if Grace is on the call, um, you do so as well. Uh, so um, next slide, please. All right, so uh, in terms of the background, uh, we already have um, a Santa Rosa zoning code that re regulates temporary hanging banners, but it's not related to street pole banners. Uh, and then we also have in place the council policy that outlines city advertising policy and guidelines for promoting non-city service on city owned facilities, equipment and social media. Um, but neither of the, the, of the code or the council policy address a comprehensive street light pole banner policy designed to establish un uniform regulations and associated fees for banner placement by non-city entities. The adoption of the street pole banner policy would fill this gap. Street light pole banners are typically used for promotional purposes, placemaking and enhancement, placemaking, placemaking and enhancement tool. The city of Santa Rosa has a lot of banners uh, citywide on city-owned light poles on an informal basis 
for programs and projects directly associated with city departments and divisions, as well as for select nonprofit organizations that have worked through the city manager's office. And uh, we now see uh, that the banners uh, a policy is, uh, uh, is uh, needed. Um, so within the city, the demand for banner, banner display has generally been driven by the Economic Development Division for seasonal and event related issues. Non-city use uh, of street pole banners include Railroad Square Association, Rose Parade, and the Wednesday Night Market, to name a few. New requests for banner placements are increasing for such events and organizations such as uh, Sonoma County Pride and the Junior College, as well as play placemaking desires such as the Sonoma County Museum and Memorial Hospital. The economic development team uh, staff in coordination with Public Works uh, street maintenance division were charged with facilitating the locations, hardware purchases, scheduling, and installation of banners on street poles. Installation and removal of banners has been performed by Public Works, which has also impacted their core services uh, during the last couple of years. Uh, next slide, please. So the purpose. Um, with the with the with banner interest continuing to rise, mainly from event producers, but also from neighborhood groups and nonprofit organizations, the proposed streetlight pole banner policy is intended to provide a clear and fair process where none has existed. The purpose of the banner policy is to establish a program, guidelines, and proposed fees for placement of banners on city streetlight poles in the public right away. So some of the typical uh, banner uses would be for recognitions, events such as Ironman, Wednesday Night Market, placemaking uh, for our community districts, seasonal historic recognitions, public facilities. Inel ineligible banner uses, oops, uh, let's go back one. one. Uh, in ineligible banner uses would be uh, of course, violation of the uh, San Jose City Code, violation of the council advertising policy, activities not open to the general public, commercial, political, religious content, and images or messages inconsistent with these guidelines. Um, so I'm gonna move on real quick, uh, next slide please, to, the, uh, to how we got to uh, the whole part regarding um, application uh, process and and, uh, and propose uh, fees. Uh, we did take a look with, in our research, we did take a look at uh, various uh, municipalities throughout the Bay Area and um, did an assessment on uh, and learned that many of the local municipalities uh, already have banner uh, policies uh, or banner programs in place. And there's also fees associated with, the, uh, with these services. Uh, we learned that um, many of the municipalities had stepped out completely out of the business of installing banners. However, we did find uh, a few, such as the city of San Mateo, that still uh, uh, puts up banners um, by working with uh, uh, the organizations wishing to, to do so. Uh, and then uh, in that table, we also laid out uh, some of the fees associated with banner programs, and it ranges between $25 to close to $600 in, uh, in other municipalities, such as the city of Vallejo. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so um, here I'm gonna uh, go between these two next slides, which is the process and the proposed fees. But basically to exercise quality control and streetlight pole availability, banner requests will be reviewed by city staff uh, via a streetlight pole banner application. Seeking to, seeking to use the street poles for banner placement will apply to review, will apply through so, so we can get the opportunity to review. And that would also include dates, poll numbers, and artwork content, and um, who will eventually be the installer. Upon approval of the op upon approval, the applicant pays the encroachment permit fees to ensure proper documentation and insurance and their designated installer also must submit a traffic plan. Um, following the installation of the banners, staff will provide an inspection of the installation to ensure proper placement of these banners. So to that end, through 
uh, clear regulations and shifting the responsibility of installation and removal of banners from our street crews to the private sector, the banner program provides an accessible pathway for banner placement in support of placemaking and promoting community activities. The city's role is basically to facilitate the coordination among organizations, minimize the scheduling conflicts, and ensure public safety. Banner applications will be available here at City Hall and online. Um, uh, so basically the process will be, um, the application will include availability, content review, and installer documentation for compliance. The permit issuance um, will again uh, get approved and, and so forth. And then, uh, Eileen, I, I sorry, if you could go back to the, uh, uh, oh, the previous one, sorry. Um, uh, the, the traffic control uh, plan will be submitted and then the installation part will, um, um, will include the inspection and maintenance and upkeep. We don't want these uh, banners to fall off and uh, we want to ensure that the, uh, the zip tie clips are on there as well in the event of major wind uh, storms, uh, etc. Next slide, please. All right, so then uh, in terms of the fees, we um, uh, are proposing or we'll be uh, making a presentation to the City Council on January 12th to go over these proposed fees. So, so basically, there is a uh, an application fee uh, of $45, and then that takes you, if, um, uh, if we approve uh, all the required documents uh, through the encroachment permit um, uh, section, and the encroachment fee is $128, plus the installer will have to pay uh, a traffic control fee of $147. And then at the end, once those um, beautiful banners are installed, then we'll go out and make sure that there's an inspection conducted. And that ranges between the amount of um, banners that are installed between 75 to $225. Okay, let's go to the next um, item. The next uh, slide, please. And then uh, these are some of the requirements that you'll see on the uh, uh, proposed application that again will be presented at the city council meeting on January 12th. Uh, next. next slide, please, perfect. Uh, okay, so in terms of the outreach, uh, beyond reviewing the proposed policy and regulations with city staff members from Public Works, Recreation and Parks and others, we focus our outreach and policy development engagement efforts on event organizers such as Wednesday Night Market, Winter Lights and Sonoma County Pride. Staff also had the opportunity to meet, uh, to meet and make presentations to the Metro Chamber, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the Downtown Action Organization, back uh, before the pandemic, uh, Rebel Square Association, the Museum of Sonoma County, and we also had the opportunity to, to speak to our Rosen area business owners and representatives um, from uh, various other organizations and interested parties. Input and concerns were also considered and integrated into the policy as appropriate, and this was based on a prior uh, presentation that we made to this very uh, own committee uh, back in uh, February. So we incorporated those changes as well. The policy has gone through uh, some minor revisions. So uh, at this point, I'd like to uh, uh, ask uh, if there are any questions um, regarding the uh, banner policy. Thank you, Rafael. Uh, uh, good stuff here. Uh, Vice Mayor, do you have any questions on, on this uh, presentation? I do not. Thank you. Uh, and I'll ask our host to check for any raised hands or the public comment on this item. Thank you, Chair Oliveris. There are no raised hands at this time. Just give it a couple seconds here. Okay, so it looks like we have uh, no public comment on this item. We'll move on to our public safety update, uh, Sergeant Wolf. Uh, yes, thank you. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, I guess I'll chime in on uh, what Caden's brought up earlier. We are seeing an increase in um, the homeless population downtown. 
Uh, we've responded to a number of calls for service related to normally either, well, odd behavior. Um, they had a guy in a dress singing show tunes in a tree. We talked down on 4th Street. Um, so we've had some kind of odd calls down there. Um, but there are a number of issues and crimes, including thefts and vandalism going on in the downtown corridor. Uh, we're working with some of the business owners on 4th Street that are having some repeated issues, probably with the same individual or two. Um, we're trying to address that. We've really been focused on, well, the downtown corridor and the Prince Memorial oh. Greenway have been our primary concerns, but we're still keeping an eye on Fremont Park, Juilliard Park, uh, Comstock Mall. Uh, we've had a, we've been a significant presence at Comstock Mall and we're still seeing some of the daytime loitering, but less of the overnight camping there. Um, the DAO, hats off to them. I know we've been involved once or twice with people actively, well, being very aggressive, cussing at them and things like that. So um, we have placed a number of people on mental health holds and we have made a significant, uh, sorry, significant number of arrests in the downtown area. Um, but we're still continuing to see some of the issues. Um, also City Hall, we've made a couple of arrests out there. Some people that were high on meth and engaging in some bad behaviors. Um, and the transit mall. So I guess in general, the downtown has had kind of an influx, um, almost exclusively homeless related issues. We're doing our best to stay on top of that. I met with the mall recently over concerns with the possible civil unrest uh, with the elections. Um, so the events that have been planned haven't been anything significant that we been tracking, but we expect if there is something significant, it might form quickly in reaction, uh, a reactionary group forms. Um, we do have plans in place to address that. Uh, and then finally, uh, for the Railroad Square people, I plan on meeting, I need to speak to, I believe it was Mr. Silver um, and possibly Mike Montague. I'm going to try and meet with you guys next week to talk about some of the concerns there and also moving into winter um, just some thoughts about the underpasses and that's it. Great. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, Thank you. Vice Mayor, any questions for related to public safety? Um, I do not. Thank you. Thank you. And our, I'll ask our host to see if there's any public comment on this item. Thank you, Chair Oliveris. We do have, um, Bernard Schwartz would like to speak. Hold on just one moment. Mr. Schwartz. I have um, given the opportunity to unmute yourself. Um, there. And I will go ahead and share the public comment screen. Mr. Schwartz, are you able to see the screen? I am. If you would like to proceed. Thank you. I just wanted to mention that um, the downtown community really appreciates the police presence and we appreciate the challenges that both the street team from the DAO and the police department are facing every day. There has been some talk about boarding up in anticipation of maybe some election um, protests. Right now, there are a few buildings boarded up, bigger institutions. Those of us that are smaller businesses are resisting because frankly, it's a bad look. And I know that we might be late in this, but my own personal decision has been to wait and see if something happens. I just wanted to make that comment and, um, and again, let you know how much we appreciate the police presence downtown. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie. Chair Oliveris, there are no additional hands raised at this time. Thank you. Let's uh, move to uh, Dean uh, Hamlet with our parks crew related to uh, maintenance in the Cordell Square area. Good morning. Good morning, Dean. Uh, good to see everybody. Uh, challenging times for sure. Uh, just a few quick notes, uh, update on Fremont Park. Um, pg e is actually going to come in and going to update the um, power source for the entire park, which will be for the lighting, water feature, and irrigation controller, and then 
um, Public Works Electrical Section is going to help us out with getting a new power tower and then we'll put in a new controller cabinet and then we can start moving forward with uh, doing some more turf work once we know that we have um, water automatically in that park. Um, I just wanted to remind anybody, uh, DAO included, um, if you're doing any sidewalk washing now going into winter, um, be very, very cognizant of the temperature before sunup. Um, could create um, ice on sidewalks. Um, it's something that we try to steer away from this time of year unless we absolutely have to, um, because that could create a possible hazardous situation. So it's just something to keep in the back of your minds. If you are gonna use any water that could eventually um, ice over on the sidewalks. Uh, I do wanna throw a shout out to um, our streets graffiti crew. Uh, they've been helping us out tremendously in the downtown core, um, kind of filling in some gaps. I had um, one of our longtime employees resigned from the downtown crew. So we're down to three at the moment, which um, just the, any help that we can get from our street side um, really is helping out. And, and I just wanted to throw out a shout out there. Uh, and a shout out to Raphael for the uh, meeting with the Railroad Square folks, um, as far as trying to make some visual improvements, uh, some tree work, um, possibly maneuvering some garbage cans. Um, just let him know, I was able to order some new uh, can liners. Um, as soon as they get here, we have an inventory in the yard. Those are the same cans that are down 4th Street and 3rd and so forth. So if you do find that those cans are missing liners, don't hesitate to call us. Uh, we, we keep an inventory here in the yard to pull from um, just so that it doesn't take uh, too long to get them replaced. Um, yeah, we're going into uh, irrigation control mode. We're trying to get into a safe water mode now. As you know, this time of year in Sonoma County, it, um, temperatures fluctuate, days are shorter. So it becomes quite challenging to monitor water and manage water. So that's a big component of uh, our jobs this time of year. Uh, as well as starting to do some tree pruning when we can find time to squeeze that in um, as some of our trees downtown go dormant. Um, so that's definitely on the hit list as well. That's it for me. Thank you, Dean, and thank you for your continued efforts in uh, keeping things maintained and looking sharp downtown and, uh, and other areas, Fremont Park especially. I know that's kind of in a recovery mode right now, so thank you for that. Uh, Vice Mayor, any questions or comments for on this item? No, thank you very much, Dean. Thank you. Madam Host, do we have any raised hands for comments on this item? Thank you, Chair Oliveros. No, there are no raised hands at this time. Thank you. Let's move to uh, Kelly at uh, Housing and Community Services for an update there. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, everyone. Um, just a brief update. I think that Cadence and Sergeant Wolf um, did a good job of providing a summary what, um, with regards to what's happening in the downtown related to homelessness. And uh, Cadence, Cadence mentioned um, that we're meeting on a weekly basis between Streets Plus and Hosts. And just want to mention that I appreciate that partnership uh, to improve coordination of our homeless response efforts in the downtown area. And then um, Really, like I said, Cadence and Sergeant Wolf did a great job updating the group on what's going on downtown. Um, my focus or our focus on the programming side of things, because I'm the city's homeless services manager, is on the closure of the Finley program, the safe social distancing program that we set up in response to COVID-19. Um, we're closing that down uh, with the anticipation of winter weather coming and have worked, of course, with all the individuals there to find them placements prior to the closure. And then also the construction of Sam Jones Hall, you might be aware, we're constructing a, uh, a new facility. It's a sprung structure in the parking lot at Sam Jones Hall, and that's going to provide up to 60 beds. And that's to restore capacity that we lost due to social distancing requirements. So back in March, we lost 60 beds at the shelter, and we're taking steps to restore those beds, which we all know are very much in need in our community. So. I think that's um, my update from the homeless services side of things. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, Vice Mayor, any questions for Kelly? No. Thank you. Madam Host, any uh, raise hands for comment on this item? 
Thank you, Chair Oliveris. No, there are no raised hands at this time. Okay. And that's it on our, on our agendized items. We have no matters in committee. Do we have any department uh, reports of any type, anything to report out on? I see no raised hands none. at this time. Thank you. And you know what, let me reach out to uh, members of the public if there are any uh, things that they want to uh, Check in on more more related to future agenda items. Is there anything uh, that you want to uh, bring forward? Want us to, to explore bringing forward to this committee related to the downtown uh, that you might need uh, for this committee? Chair Oliveris, I see no raised hands at this time. Great, thank you. I just want to make sure that people had an opportunity to weigh in to see if there's anything that they needed. So. Great meeting, thank you. Uh, uh, a lot of good information and, and a lot of exciting things coming to the downtown as we transition into uh, the, the holiday season. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to our next meeting as well. So I'll let you all get back to your screen and check out what those election results are looking like. I know it's a nail biter, but we'll see where we go. So thank you all. And with that, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.